78 degrees, a slight breeze. Beautiful day all day. And we're supposed to get three solid days here in Kansas City for this series. Here's the Tigers batting order in game one presented by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealer. Zach McKinstry leads off last 10 games. He's batting a crisp 333. Spencer Torkelson against Brady Singer in his career three for eight with a home run. And Matt Veerling bats seventh against Washington. It was a strong series for the Tigers right fielder. He went five for 12 with a homer. Brady Singer is on the bump for Kansas City. Why is he so effective? Well, he does attack the strike zone, Shep, but you're going to see that he's had a lot of success against the Tigers. Ten starts, 6-0. and oh. He's been stingy in the run department, but it's two seam fastballs in, and it's been sliders down and away. And oh, by the way, he is not the same guy he has been out his, throughout his career. He has scuffled this year. Look up, Take a look at the ERA. He has scuffled here at Kauffman Stadium. Stadium. Look for the Tigers to jump all over him today. A.J. Hinch says he's a guy who dots his pitches that are pretty enticing. He's going to uh, feature you know, the left back hip to the lefties and down and away to the righties. And the first pitch to Zach McKinstry is in for a strike. Yeah, but you have to love these matchups. Going against a guy that has pretty much handled you extremely well, you got to be up for the challenge. He works quickly, and it's one and one to McKinstry. He went too far, and it's one and two. hit to right just does what he does and he does it so well in the leadoff spot doesn't he well he just has some really good rhythm good timing and even when he's not getting a perfect pitch to hit he hits athletic he can go down and get a pitch in the, that's out of the strike zone and that's what I really love about him McKinstry he can drive that ball the opposite way and you see there pulling that baseball getting the bat hit out on a ball that was down and in Brings up Riley Green, who takes strike one. There's that two-seat fastball that you're talking about there, where it's going to start at the left-hander's right hip, and it's going to run right back over the inside part of the plate. Lefties will not, they will not be able to give up on that pitch today. Moved his feet, and it's one and one. Little equipment repair for Salvador Perez behind the dish. Captain of Kansas City has it fixed. It's one and one to Riley Green. Fouled away. With Kansas City giving Riley Green that third base line. Nicky Lopez is the third baseman for the Royals just reinstated today and he is way off the bag. Yeah I find that very interesting especially with two strikes. We've seen Riley shoot that ball the other way. Another check on McKinstry. Low and away, it's two and two to Riley Green. And Green strikes out for the first out of the night. Here's the Kansas City defense. J Jackie Bradley Jr. is in center field. 60 assists since 2014, more than any other center fielder in the game. 
Nicky Lopez, as we mentioned, just reinstated, and Salvador Perez, the fourth captain in Royals history. Bobby Witt Jr. at shortstop. He's been much better at short than he was at third base a year ago. A plus six defensive run save at the shortstop spot for Bobby Witt Jr. Baez takes it outside, one and oh. Now 2-0 to Baez. C.B. Buckner is calling balls and strikes here in the series opener. Jeff Nelson is the crew chief. He's down the third base line. Softly over the head of Pascantino. Rolls down the right field line. McKinstry safely in at second. Baez has a bloop single. First and second for the Tigers here in the first. Well, Baez will take it. Given the last four games, he's scuffling. 0 for a 16 slump. So what do you do? You try to get there early. Gets jammed, but he muscles this ball over the head of Pascantino at first base. And he gets himself a knock. That's at 46 miles an hour, Simo. I mean, people drive faster than that in your subdivision, and yet he's <laughs> aboard. That's cool for the Tigers and sets the stage for Spencer Torkelson. Again, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. A first pitch strike to Spencer Torkelson. Good numbers in his career against Brady Singer. Low and away to make it one and one. The Tigers have been getting traffic on the bases when even going back to the last series but just wasn't able to deliver that big blow. Taps it foul. And here's another opportunity. For them to cash in. That wasted way too many opportunities in the last two games against Washington. Not saying that they should have swept the Nationals, but they had plenty of opportunities and just couldn't get it done. Yeah, Left just, 11 men on base yesterday. Yeah, some of the at bats in those big moments, as AJ would say, the mistake have to match the intent. And they just really wasn't good. They weren't good at bats in those big moments. Guys were chasing pitches. Saw so guys check swinging, 0 oh, oh, count. Yeah, the the at bats you could yesterday against Washington, you could actually think that it was closer to at the beginning of the season against Tampa and Boston than it was some of the recent series that we've seen the Tigers at bats but the beauty of this sport and you say it all the time you flush it and you move on and the Tigers are in full belief of that and trying to turn that page here quickly tonight. Another 2 2 low and away it's a full count to Torkelson with Maton on deck. Well the one thing that the Tigers do continue to do is put together some good at bats. They're not giving in. They're, there's not a lot of swing early or swing and miss early or weak contact. They have done a better job of commanding the zone. Torkelson with a drive but foul. Oh, a lot of Royals fans just had a massive gulp all at once. Well, Singer threw Torkelson a ton of curve, I mean, a ton of sliders. And so he's seeing that slider well, and that one started right at him. And that one's going to be a strike, and he hit that ball way <laughs> out there at the upper deck <laughs> in the stands to the pool side. He heard it. Lost him, and the bases are loaded.
early threat for Detroit. Hoping to make it hurt. And here's Nick Maton. Maton starting to swing the bat better. Had some really good at bats yesterday. Seems like to me he's not jumping at the baseball. He's staying back, letting the hands get out in front. Takes it low, 1 and 0. Oh. Two for four against the Nats yesterday. A homer. He also walked. Back on plane a little bit. He's the designated hitter here tonight. And the biggest mistake hitters make in this situation with the bases loaded that you want to get greedy. You want to drive everybody in. Ground ball, but foul. That home run for Mayton was his fifth of the season. It came in the sixth. It was and a 96 mile per hour fastball. A pitch that we haven't really seen him get to lately during his mere little slump that he was in. So it was nice to see him be nice and slow and smooth and get the bat hit to the baseball. I'd like to see him do that right here. Waiting on a 1 1. Taps it foul. That was the slider from Brady Singer at 87. Now 1 and 2 to Mayton. Now Mayton has to just go into battle mode here because his number one goal is to get that guy in the third base. That would be McKinstry. Less than two outs. McKinstry singled, Baez did, and Torkelson walked. Fly ball to the outfield, gets it done. Punches it, soft left. Witt Jr.'s got it. That was the infield fly rule anyway, two away. If Detroit scores at least three runs in the game, visit a participating Arby's location tomorrow and get a free small order of curly fries. Big early at bat in this one for Akil Badu. Outside 1-0. Simo was talking about the missed opportunities for Detroit yesterday. They left the bases loaded twice. Once in the fourth and once in the sixth. Inside 2-0. and oh. Let's take a look at so far what Brady Singer's doing to the Tigers. Heavy dose of sliders. Almost pitching backwards, using the slider to set up that sinking fastball. 3 and 0 to Badu. Beerling hoping for a chance as well. Four straight pitches out of the zone. He walks home McKinstry. Tigers plate the first run of the night. That's been the growth and the development of Akil Badu. He has shown some patience. Doesn't seem to be in a rush. Really focusing on getting good pitches to hit. And when he does it, he takes his base. 28 pitches, 14 balls, 14 strikes. Tigers have made him work. They've been disciplined. They lead at 1-0. Now Matt Veerling, a chance to add on. Last year in a much better place in every category for Brady Singer. Starts Veerling out with a strike. That's the sinker at 93. It's 0 1. Pops it foul. And out of play. 0 2 to Veerling, who had a really good series in Washington. Really like the direction in which he was hitting the ball. He was staying on it. He was hitting it through a big part of the field, left center, right center, something that the Tigers continue to preach. 
use the big part of the field. That's low and away. 31 now for Singer. Simo's point on his struggles and scuffles this year. That's the fifth time he has thrown 30 pitches or more in an inning this year. Barely able to use his time out here. Guys are just not chasing that slider off the plate. They're making him throw it for a strike. Perez couldn't bring it back enough. It's now one and two. Or two and two, rather, to Veerling. Wouldn't be surprised if Veerling's sitting on that slider right here. Ground ball into left field. Baez scores. Here comes Torkelson. Throw is cut off. He scores. It's a two run single for Matt Veerling. 3 0 Detroit. Well, you know you're going to get a slider in that 2 2 count. That ball's running away from Veerling, but I like the way he stays out over the plate and gets the bat head to it and hits that ball hard enough to get it by Big Lopez at third base. Now Eric Haas stands in and takes one low and away. Tigers are making it hurt early for Brady Singer. He has labored through this first inning. Been up three hits and a couple of walks. Haas taps it foul. Haas is the eighth batter of the inning for Detroit. Zach Short is on deck. Should Haas get aboard? Here's the 2 1. Ground ball to Short. Witt Jr. will take the force at second, but a lot of damage done for the Tigers. Three runs on three hits, a couple of walks. The biggest at bat, Matt Veerling. He delivers a two run single to extend the lead, and it's Detroit up early in KC. Order presented by your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Nick Prado leads off for the first time in his career. Salvador Perez bats third. He leads the team in homers and RBIs. And Bobby Witt Jr. for the first time this season bats sixth. They face Michael Lorenzen, who throws the first pitch a little high, and it's 1 0. Lorenzen has been really good with the first pitch strike using that fastball. Hitting all four quadrants of the strike zone. Setting up his secondary pitches. It should be a slider to change up. Inside two and one to Nick Prado. You guys, get this. Coming into the season, Larissa was throwing seven different pitches. Well, he's dominating with the three pitches that he's throwing. That four seamer slider change up mix. Line drive base hit to left for Nick Prado. And what you're going to see from Lorenzen, guys, you're going to see him use that fastball to, like I said, up and down, east and west. He's going to work north and south with the fastball and change up mix. He will throw that change up. He will throw it, he'll throw it mostly to left handers, but he will occasionally throw it to righties. It's not a strikeout pitcher. He's a guy that induces weak contact. Faces Vinny Pascantino. <laughs> Fouled away down the left field line. Talked with Pascantino for a long time before the game today. Asked him about him and Bobby Witt Jr. as young guys trying to lead this Kansas City team to a certain extent. And he said, look, you got to stay the same. 
you can't be riding that roller coaster. You got to lead by performance by preparation and by results. That's outside. And he, and he says you know nothing I could say in a clubhouse to these guys that would be speaking any louder than how I show them how I play so. A good perspective for a young guy. A drive down the right field line that is hooking and it is fair. A home run for Vinny Pasquantino, his ninth of the season, and Kansas City gets two back. Salvador Perez you know that's not a home run celebration that big hairy ape comes out every single time Pascantino gets a hit but that's a pretty cool way to celebrate one guy's accomplishment Perez with a drive left center field that ball's hit hard that ball's out of here and just like that we're tied. things that Lorenzo has done really well is he stayed out of the middle of the plate and he's also pitched ahead in the count and so he's able to manipulate the baseball to induce some weak contact take a look at the location of these pitches to this young Royals team the ball there's center cut it's a change up at 85 miles per hour then there's your change up to a right handed which looks more like a slider but it's again out over the plate and that's where hitters are doing their most damage. This is MJ Melendez. Heavy cut and a miss. It's 0 2. one deep to right veerling at the track feeling for the wall he's got room and he puts MJ Melendez away and here's an offense of the Kansas City Road that has struggled all season long very very inconsistent there's that little slider there that ball stays up just enough for Perez and you can hear the sound there of that ball jumping off his bat The Pascantino homer left his bat at 109 miles an hour. It came off at 105 of Salvador Perez's bat to even things at three. Michael Massey way out in front. The change up at 84. That's one and one. Squares to bunt and take strike two. Sharply on a one hopper. Zach Short handles it. There are two away. Tiger 
Tigers defense presented by Mary Grove Awning. Second straight game in which Badu, Green, and Veerling make up the outfield. Zach McKinstry has really impressed at third base. Eric Haas catching Michael Lorenzen for the fifth time. Zach Short just made that play. First start at second base this year. He's finished some games there. This is his first start. Here's Bobby Witt Jr. We mentioned while going through the Kansas City order, this is the first time he bat sixth in the Kansas City lineup. Yeah, he's been going through it this season. A looper caught by Zach Short. Kansas City gets back to back homers for the first time this season. They've tied it at three after one. Upgrade your ballpark experience this Memorial Day weekend with the private Comerica Park Suite for $100 per person. Book your premium seating experience by, visit, by visiting tigers.com slash suite. Zach Short leads off the Tigers second. In stunning fashion, the Tigers got to Brady Singer for three, and then equally as surprising, the Royals bounced right back with their first back-to-back -back home runs since July against the Tigers a year ago. Yeah, you feel really good. And the Tigers jumped ahead 3 nothing, given the way <laughs> Lorenzen has been pitching. Yeah. He's been dominating, going deep into the ball game, seven innings. And I are bobbing our heads back and forth you during the good. songs in between yeah. innings, and then pow pow. You feel like you're in the ring with Tommy the Hitman Hearns <laughs> back in the heyday. <laughs> 2 2 to Zach Short. Swung on and missed. Second strikeout of the night for Brady Singer. One away. Well, the right-handers know that they're going to get a heavy dose of sliders from Singer, especially with two strikes. It's his go-to pitch. And that's a little slider there that's really located well. Tiger hitters are going to have to, right-handed hitters are going to have to get that ball a little bit closer to him. McKinstry led the night off with a single, and then he scored one of three runs for Detroit in the first. Swings through that fastball, and it's now 0-2. He's got a chance to catch his breath after his offense comes back out and put up a three spot. Missed sure. away, and it's one and two. Sure, he kind of feels like now the game is now 0 0, sure. and he can kind of start over. 37 pitches needed to get through the first for Brady Singer. Strikes out McKinstry, back to back punch outs here in the second form. Kind of giving him some life. Feel it, can't you? I can feel it. You can see it in his body language. His body language is bad walking off that mound after giving up three. But look at this fastball at 93 at the top of the zone. Floats it right by McKinstry. Three strikeouts for Singer tonight. His first victim was Riley Green, who follows the first pitch away. Given the success he's had against the Tigers, you don't want to give him any more confidence than he needs. On the corner, 0 and 2. Singer 6 and 0 in his career with an ERA of under two and a half. The six wins, the most against any opponent he's ever faced. You see numbers like that. You have numbers like that against a certain team. There's no question. There's a sense of confidence, more sense of confidence when you take the bump. Or if you're in that batter's box and you put some good and bad together against an organization. A.J. Hinch said his hitters have to know where the plate is against Brady Singer. They're going to be successful today. What do you think he meant by that? Well, when you're going up against Singer, because he has so much movement on his pitches, you have to know how far outside is for you as a hitter. As a right-handed hitter, you have to know where that slider has to, needs to start for it to be a strike. The payoff is grounded foul.
one thing Kansas City does like about Singer is his willingness to go inside to keep hitters honest. Well, he just makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. He doesn't allow you to just lean out over the plate. He'll straighten you up with that fastball inside. Just trying to open up the outside part of the plate for himself. Green battling him here three and two. Got away with one right there. Look at this slider here. That's spinning right over the middle. It's a good swing by Green just underneath it. Gonna give Simo a bib. He's licking his chops and something like that. And Green draws a walk. The third walk allowed by Brady Singer here tonight. Really jumpy over here in this in this seat tonight. You know, you see those breaking balls right down the middle. You're just jumpy because you're like, oh, that's gonna get hit hard. Javier Baez didn't hit it hard last time up, but he hit it in the right place for a bloop single. Takes it low and away. A lot of times it takes one of those little bleeders that Javier Baez got in his first to bat to get you going. That's on the corner to even it up. Fours in strike number two. That's the slider at 84. One and two to Baez. Oh, and away. Two and two to Baez. Coming into the ball game, when you know the CB Buckner is going to be behind the plate, you know he's got a wide strike zone. So you're going to have to be a little, a little more aggressive. Because you will, he will make some mistakes. He will give pitchers off the plate away and in. Jammed him. Singer's going to have to hurry. Can't pick it up. Baez is aboard for the second time tonight. Javier Baez is just smiling because he's hit the ball <laughs> pretty hard and he hasn't been rewarded. Two duck snorts here today. If they say they even out. Yeah, that's what they say. I'm not sure if they do, but in Baez's case today, he'll take those two knocks. Spencer uh, Torkelson walked his first time up. Looks at one outside, and he scored. Tigers with three in the first. They're threatening for more here in the second. Natan on deck. Torkelson with a drive right center field that ball is caught by Jackie Bradley Jr. Boy did he make up some ground. Good reason right there why he won a gold glove not too long ago. Chase this one down save two runs and extra bases to keep it tied at three. Bottom three in the Kansas City order it's Nicky Lopez Jackie Bradley Jr. and Michael Garcia to face Michael Lorenzen. Lopez reinstated today after the Royals designated Hunter Dozier for assignment. It's the second veteran that Kansas City has DFA'd this year. Earlier this season, it was Fran Mill Reyes. It's 3-0 to Lopez. That's in for a strike. 3-1 and one to Nicky Lopez. Big hole on the left side. Baez up the middle. 
No need. Lopez will take the free pass to start the second. And now a message from Rally House. Play ball, Michigan. Shop the latest in Tiger style with your favorite brands and throwback designs. Rally House has gear for every fan. Well, you see it time and time again in baseball. Guy makes an incredible defensive play. Eventually, he bats in that inning. And Jackie Bradley Jr. is doing just that after robbing Spencer Torkelson of a couple of RBIs and extra bases to end the second. He stands in with nobody out and a man on first. That's why the Kansas City Royce trusts him in the center field. His ability to make those kind of plays. Look at his offensive numbers and they just haven't been that good. Really been in the pool mode and hit any balls the opposite way. And when he was going well, he was in a Red Sox uniform. He was able to spray that ball to all fields. 2018, he was the American League Championship Series MVP. One two chopped to second could be two the relay from by in time to get Jackie Bradley Jr. A much needed double play from Michael Lorenzen two away in the second. And really like watching Zach Shore play the infield. He gets a good jump on this ball comes in on it quick toss over to Baez. Take a look how quickly he gets rid of this baseball and he gets it to Baez and Baez guns down Jackie Bradley Jr. Michael Garcia, the number nine hitter, stands in, playing second base for the Royals here tonight. Chops one foul. He was recalled May 2nd. Now 0-2. Low and away, one and two to Garcia. Seeing Lorenz and go sliders down. Tried to elevate that fastball at 96. See if he goes back to that slider right here. On the corner to get him staring. That's the first strikeout of the night for Michael Lorenzen. It ends the Kansas City second. We are tied at three through two on Valley Sports. I mean, this best team, or my favorite team I've ever been on. So, uh, a lot of good personalities. Guys say pretty even keel overall. If we lose a close one, uh, lose a big one. If we win a big one, uh, win a close one. Guys are saying uh, pretty, pretty confident in the clubhouse, and uh, they they deal with it well. Well, guys, that was Zach McKinsey right there, and, and uh, you know, I find that fascinating. Former Central Michigan chip, you know, just turned 28 years old. He's played for the Dodgers. He's played for the Cubs. You know, not carving out his niche here uh, with the Tigers and, you know, saying that this is his favorite team he's ever been a part of. And of course, you know, you guys, you're around it every day, just like I am. You talk about the different personalities. We just saw Nick Maton there ground out to lead off this inning, but you know, Maton and Badu, McKinsey, all these guys just coming together. It really is a fun group to be around. It'd be one thing to say, yeah, it's my favorite team because, you know, you're world beaters. But this is a team that's trying to find its footing right now, playing good baseball. But I, I just I really was taken aback when he said when he said what he did about this club. That's a good vibe. That's for sure. Yeah they've created a really good atmosphere inside that clubhouse. They're a tight knit group. Yeah winning for one another too. That's perhaps the best sign that there are no egos. They're checking those at the door. And everybody's rooting for one another. And rooting for Akil Badu here who drove in the first run with a bases loaded walk in the first. Up the middle and out of the reach 
of Garcia. Badu is aboard with one away here in the third. Sip, I also like the fact that there's a lot of trust in each other. That's called we're passing the baton. Here's a nice at bat here by Akil Badu. A little two seamer running away from him. That ball runs right over the inner third. He doesn't roll it over, hits it right back up the middle. He's always a base stealing threat anytime that he's on. Tell you what, that's a couple of really good starts for him. Started the game in Washington with a homer and had a strong performance there against the Nats going back home from Silver Spring, Maryland, just 10 miles away from Nationals Park. And now already here tonight, a walk and a single. Here's Matt Veerling, who drove in two in the first with a single through the left side. Fouls it back. He's talking with Veerling, and Veerling seemed to find himself in between. He really wants to be able to use the whole field. He said he finds himself letting the ball at times early and counts getting a little bit too deep. To more to the pull side. And help but wonder if things change with Akil Badu at first. The base stealing threat for sure. Talk to him a little bit about what, what are you hearing from Alfredo Amazica at first base? He said, you know, whether I got the red light or the green light, got certain signals. Beerling with a drive deep left field Prado going back he's at the wall it's gone Veerling with a two run blast Tigers are back in front Well, we told you that Singer would continue to throw that slider all night long. How about this slider that backs up at 84 miles per hour? And he speeds up the bat of Ver Matt Virlin and he hits that ball out. And look at Akil Badu waiting for him. <laughs> what a great reaction. He was and the big <laughs> smile by Virlin. <laughs> Badu started backpedaling <laughs> his way towards second base. Oh, that's awesome. Beerling puts on the hockey gear for the fourth time this season. And Detroit's up 5-3. To third base, Lopez will throw out Haas. Two away. Celebration growing on everybody. Well, he's tap, getting it too. Yeah, <laughs> tap of the helmet. I don't see the hockey gloves just yet, but the helmet and stick will do. Here's Zach Short. A line drive to left. Zach Short is aboard. Yeah, Singer's starting to hang that breaking ball. Doesn't have the same bite that it had last year or even earlier this season. Back to the top of the order and Zach McKinstry. Seven hits for the Tigers already. McKinstry fouls it back. Singled and scored in the first and struck out in the second. Tigers are making these some stressful innings. Brady Singer laying off. Pitchers pitches, getting themselves better pitches to hit, controlling the zone. Fouls another one away. He's gotten rid of the sunglasses. So go the rest of the night without. And understandably so, since the whole field is covered now. Sends one in the air. Shallow center. Jackie Bradley Jr. puts it away. But Matt Veerling delivers another bomb. His fourth of the season. This one traveled 401 feet and puts Detroit back. It's four away. Tigers money line means they need to win this ball game. Spencer Torgerson did walk, but he needs two total bases. And Salvador Perez has done his part. He's got the home run, the solo homer. So 
I'll tell you what, I'm going to give this the JK lock of the day. The only thing I can guarantee more than that is that Matt Shepard won't get another haircut till after the All Star break. <laughs> Better believe that. I can guarantee the latter. You can put your money down on that, pal. I'm locking it in. All right, lock it in. It's locked in. Lock it. Locked in. Lock and load, partner. Oh, partner, I hate that you don't like your haircut, man. Nick Prado like with a line drive to left, but Akil Badu is there. <laughs> you don't like the short look, huh? I think we've talked enough about it. There's one away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I'm not saying I could handle that do, but I could do a lot better than what I got right now. And here comes Vinny Pascantino. Two run homer for Pascantino in the first. Gave Kansas City life after Detroit was up three nothing. Big swing and a foul back. Salvador Perez then followed with a solo homer and then we were tied before Veerling untied it in the top half of the inning. Here's Pascantino's bomb. Yeah, Lorenzo fell behind 2 1 count, change up. Didn't have that same bite that we've seen early in the season. Ball stays up and Pascantino drills that ball to right field. I like that helmet. Scary for sure. And as you see there, on the ballet bar the last time they went back to back was Pascantino and Hunter Dozier who was designated for assignment today by Kansas City at Comerica Park early July of a year ago. A little shocked that they designated Hunter Dozier for assignment. I was given that they'd given him they gave him a three year deal twenty five million dollars. Yeah they, they did that a couple years ago he has really struggled over the last couple of years. It's too bad he's a really good guy and he was a first round pick for Kansas City but they just couldn't do it any longer. Decided to move on. They decided to move on. Yeah. A lot of swing and miss in his bat. It just was not happening for him. Who knows change his scenery. Maybe somebody picks him up and he thrives. One two grounded to second. Zach short perfect positioning. And here comes Salvador Perez. Menards brings you the big money encounter. Ten homers or more, 11 times in this man's career. Only George Brett has done it more frequently in Kansas City history. And he is second among active players. Only Anthony Rizzo of the Yankees has done it more among active players. He has been so good for so long. Yeah, when you start diving into his numbers and you can see right there on the screen where he's got 27 home runs and 89 RBIs against the Tigers. Follows it away. The guy that hit for power, I think there's going to be some chase because you look at his chase rate, it is way up this season, over 45%. When he gets mistakes, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't miss them. He turns that ball around. Great story grew up in Valencia, Venezuela, about an hour from Miguel Cabrera's hometown of Maracay. Abandoned by his father at the age of four and raised by his mother. Incredible numbers and accolades. Fouls it back. I haven't asked him this in a couple of years, but I remember a few years back asking him, do you still wear cologne behind <laughs> yeah. the plate? As the umpires appreciate that. You know, though that gear can get a little uh, gamey, if you will. There's the one two to him. Swung on and missed, and Lorenzen for the second straight inning strikes out the final out in the inning. Here comes Riley Green trying to add to Detroit's the Sports Detroit Instagram page for more information on how to enter and how to win. Exciting to see the Diamondbacks as Riley Green stands in. Talk about a team that uh, has surprised many. Second in the West, Green sends one in the air to center field for Jackie Bradley Jr. Casually under it, one away. Arizona, by the way, seven games over 500. Here comes Javier Baez.
the hard hit rate isn't there, but the results are. <laughs> I told you, it's all about the results. I mean, everybody likes to hit the ball 110 miles per hour, 105 off the bat. But I'll take those numbers, those that exit velocity with a couple of knocks. Especially as you said, he was an 0 for 16 slow. Yeah. Popped up, right side, but out of play. Reset the 15 second pitch clock. Singer doesn't need much time. Ground ball to second. Garcia throws out Baez. Two up, two down, and the Tigers fourth. Kansas City's bullpen starts to take some action. They've got three lefties. Josh Taylor's one of them. Torkelson walked and scored in the first and then flew out to right center field in the second. Jackie Bradley Jr. made a phenomenal catch. Yeah. To rob two RBIs and extra bases from him. Definitely extra bases. He hit that ball well. Two and one to Torkelson. Now three and one to him. Walked him for the second time. Four walks allowed by Singer who's already allowed more runs against the Tigers than he has in any of his previous 10 starts against Detroit. Yeah, but you could tell today he just didn't have his good command and give the Tigers a lot of credit. They were being patient. They were not chasing that slider off the plate away. Nobody knows it better than his manager, Matt Quattrero. He goes and gets his starter and goes to his bullpen for the first time tonight. With Simo and Johnny Kane, I'm Matt Shepard. Glad you're with us here in Kansas City. Tigers jumped out to a big lead, then the tie, 3-3, and now they've surged ahead, and, you know, there's a different vibe, a different feel for Detroit right now after this. Well, I really like the way the Tigers conducted their at-bats. against going, going up against Singer, who's had a lot of success against him. But the reason he had so much success is because the Tigers were chasing out of the zone. I know it's small gains, yeah. but it's made a huge difference in their ability to command the zone better. Today they were able to put up a five spot against a pitcher and singer who has dominated. Most runs he's allowed ever against Detroit in his career. Andy Abanez is pinch hitting for Nick Maton with two outs and a man aboard. Wallside windows pitching change. Josh Taylor is in for the 15th time out of the KC bullpen. That's a check swing. Did he go? He did. And Abanya strikes out on three pitches. Inning over. Tigers lead by two on Valley Sports in Kansas City. For more information, visit tigers.com slash student. Michael Lorenzen works his way here in the fourth against MJ Melendez, Michael Massey, and Bobby Witt Jr. in a 5-3 Tigers lead. You can tell in them second, second and the third inning, the win is starting to look like that guy who's been dominating and he's been doing it just like this pitching ahead in the count staying out of the middle using all of his pitches and keeping offenses off balance strikes out Melendez on three pitches to start the fourth that's just a wicked change of <laughs> That Mendez sees right here. Look at the left. Good arm action. 87 miles per hour. That ball running down and away from him. You can see that uncomfortable swing there by Melendez. 
Now he faces Michael Massey. What makes his changeup so effective? It's his arm action. He's, it, 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 when it comes out of his hand, it looks just like a fastball. And it's got two seam action on it. So you don't, you're not sure if it's a two seam fastball or if it's that changeup. Behind in the count to Massey 2 0. Oh. Now 3 0 oh to Massey. A lot of times, guys, when guys throw their all speed pitches, they slow their arms action down. And you're, you're able to pick that ball up a lot better. Pulls him back to make it three and two. It was a struggle to start the year for Massey just above 100 in the first few weeks of the season. But the last few weeks he has steadily been on the rise. And he strikes out here back to back strikeouts for Lorenzen here in the fourth. Well that's what's made for me what's made Lorenzen so effective he can throw that change up fading down and away you got to respect it but then he also can throw that slider down and in to the lefties as well very effective effective pitch for him the way it's crisscrossing the strike zone he can run the change up down the way slider down and in late movement Bobby Witt Jr. sends one to center field Riley Green is there. He's got it, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Michael Lorenzen, his second in a row on this Monday night in KC. Free access to the best seats at Little Caesars Arena. Go to DetroitRedWings.com slash deposits. It's interesting. We, we talk about Red Wings, and we show Tigers in Red Wings gear. <laughs> I love that. It's fantastic. <laughs> Akil Badu leads off the Tigers fifth, then Matt Veerling, who's had the big night. Followed by Eric Haas. Badu's been aboard a couple of times. Drove in a run with the bases loaded, walk in the first, singled and scored in the third. Well, the challenge for Badu against Taylor is going to be staying on that slider. I found it interesting that he throws that slider more than he throws his fastball. We're seeing more and more of that in baseball, aren't we? We really are. Becoming more of a 50-50 league than anything else. It used to be dominating fastballs. No longer. Strikes out Badu on the slider. One away in the Tigers' fifth. Now time for Chevrolet's strongest player. Who else would it be, Sam? It's Matt Vierlin. Yeah, it's just all about Vierlin's approach. He's trying to hit fastballs up the middle. And he's gotten a couple of breaking balls that's kind of speeded up his bat, which allowed him to pull those baseballs. But I just think it's all about his approach. When you're thinking to the big part of the field and they hang you a breaking ball or a change up slider, it speeds you up and you're able to catch a little bit more out in front. And that's where the big boys play. Barreling down the right field line. Lenda's giving chase, and that's off the netting. Second time this year, Matt Veerling has driven in four runs in a game. He hit that home run so high, Simo. They're waiting, waiting for it to come down. Nick Prado. I was trying to measure it. Suddenly, he realized 401 feet away. Yeah, that ball had some carry on it. 
lot of times you see that kind of carry when you redirect the, the spin of the baseball, given that it was a slider. He backspin that ball. It just carried out of here. That bounced in off Perez. Playing Veerling straight away. Another one in the dirt. Two and two. Start of a six game homestand for the Royals three here against the Tigers and then after an off day Washington pays a visit for three in a row. Of course the Tigers just left D.C. That's chopped foul. Erling strikes out the second strikeout in a row for Taylor to away. Yeah this is just another really good pitch here by Taylor that's a good slider there it looks like it looks sweeping action where that ball starts in the left handers batter's box. It's finding its way down into the back foot of the right handed hitter. You see a lot of right handed hitter swing right over the top of that pitch. Here's Eric Haas who's grounded out twice. Check swing foul. Ripped right at third. Lopez is there to retire the Tigers and Haas. They go one, two, three in the fifth, but lead by two. Ten high speed pitch. Well, it was Lorenzen early first inning making mistakes. Where's that pitch? Right over the heart of the plate. But ever since the first inning, take a look at the location on that 96 mile per hour fastball, coupled with the nasty slider off the plate away, manipulating that change of fading down and away, staying out of the middle. That's why he's been able to put up two six the last three innings. Let's hope that continues here in the fifth, huh? Nicky Lopez, Jackie Bradley Jr., and Michael Garcia. Lopez fouls it back. You can see McKinstry at third base playing in on the grass. Watch Nicky Lopez this afternoon practicing on his bunting. He will lay down one. Strokes one to right center field. Veerling on the chase. It gets by him and rolls to the wall. Lopez has got great speed. Headed for third. The throw from short. Offline. It's a leadoff triple for Nicky Lopez here in the fifth. Well, you can see the swing here. This ball is hit hard, but take a look at Virlin here. He, tried, he thinks he can cut that ball off. And that ball scoots right by and gets to the wall. And again, Lopez runs well. And he's thinking double out of the box. But once he sees Virlin not able to cut that ball off, he immediately starts thinking triple. A swing and a miss from Jackie Bradley Jr. Inside gets away from Haas, but not far enough for Lopez to try and score.
swung on and missed one and two. Well, I want to take a look back at this Virlin's way he attacked this baseball here. Like, look, you can see where Virlin is here. He's right there. That ball's hit right in the gap. You want to go back towards the wall and then work your way back in on this ball. And you can see there he cuts right across, thinking that he could cut it off. And that ball just gets right by him. You're playing the outfield. It's all about angles and the routes that you take to be able to cut those balls off, to try to keep guys to a single, try to keep them to a double. Fouled away. Another one fouled away. You talked about Veerling's angle. It's his first game here at Kauffman Stadium. It's a big outfield. Not as big as Comerica Park, but it's spacious. Yeah, there's no question. There's a lot of ground to cover here at Kauffman Stadium. That's why a lot of times you'll see guys work backwards to get around the ball and, and, and work towards the infield. Fly ball deep left field. Badu on the chase. That ball is out of here. Bradley Jr. goes yard, his first of the season, and we're tied again. I mean, it couldn't come at a better time for Jackie Bradley Jr. That is his first hit the opposite way. And it's a big one. That ball keeps carrying out to left field. And he ties this game up. A first pitch strike to Michael Garcia. Kinstry takes his time and he throws out Garcia for the first out in the KC fifth. That home run for Bradley Jr. in addition to what Simo just said also snapped an 0 for 26 skid. My goodness. I yeah, know that had to feel good to him. Yeah. To the top of the order and Nick Prado. to center green giving chase at the wall he's got it a long hard hit second out in the KC fifth yeah it does it seems to seems to me that the ball's carry here at Kauffman Stadium today here's Vinny Pascantino The slider in for a strike 0 and 1. Fouled away. Three called, and the inning is over. But Kansas City ties it. Could we see the matchup of Amir Garrett and Javier Baez? There's plenty of history there between the two with Chicago. 
it was pretty emotional and pretty vocal between the two and it carried over I mean Garrett got the best of Baez and the Cubs one night and then Baez got the best of him in late July of 2021 and he pulls out the broom and he's sweeping these two have been jarring at each other for a long time now and then you see the Tigers are running you Baez is on deck and he's shh, telling them to be quiet Well, Garrett is in for Kansas City. He faces Zach Short, Zach McKinstry, Riley Green, and perhaps Javier Baez. It's his 21st appearance in the wall side windows pitching change. 2-0 to Short, who singled his last time up. Good. That's a high octane fastball. He's not afraid to throw inside. And Perez will talk to him quickly because it's 3 and 0. Now he can get himself in trouble because he tries to overthrow. Which means that he can be erratic and he will make mistakes. Off that fastball, he'll throw a slider. He had pitched the eighth inning in Chicago yesterday. When he falls behind in the count, he'll throw his change up. <laughs> Grounded foul to make a three and two to Zach Short. Short's probably going to get a slider right here. In the dirt, he'll take the free pass. It was the slider, partner. Yeah, that's a pitch when he gets you to two strikes. He likes to throw it down and in at the right foot of the back foot of the right handed hitters. Five walks for the Tigers here tonight. Remember, they had eight yesterday in Washington. Controlling the zone is paying off. Getting some traffic on the bases. Kinstry. Yeah, and when a pitcher's having this kind of trouble commanding the zone, so important for the hitter to just, you got to take a strike. Allow him to continue to get himself in trouble. You don't want to help him out by chasing and being overly aggressive. 3 0 to him. On the corner to keep him there. Jose Quas quickly warming for KC. And another walk. McKinstry is aboard for the second time tonight. Here comes Riley Green. Javier Baez on deck. Middle of July, a year ago. Amir Garrett wanted to face him here at Kauffman Stadium and was telling Baez, I'm not afraid of you. Instead, he's gone. And Baez would face a different reliever. I did talk to Amir Garrett about the clash between the two before the game today. He tried to convince me it's just two guys competing. I said, but there's a lot of talking back and forth. He says, that's all part of it, man. 
<laughs> I, can, I can agree with them. Listen, <laughs> they do it in basketball all the time. Well, that's a good point. They do it in hockey. They do it in hockey. I mean, you've told me that plenty of times. Yeah, you're right. They do it in football. Listen, it's part of sports. Guys jar at each other. You're competing at the highest level. I guess because there's so much space in baseball, it's a little bit more pronounced. Green takes strike one. Green has drawn one of the Tigers' walks tonight. 0 for 2 so far, though. Swung on and missed. And he's down 0-2 in the count. Good speed on the base paths with Short and McKinstry. That's away, one and two. Break three called. Riley Green strikes out for the second time tonight. The first out. And Garrett will not get the chance to throw to Javier Baez. Instead, Matt Cortrero will go back to his bullpen. He faced the minimum here in the sixth, but won't get a chance to face the guy everybody wants him to see. He's pleading with his manager, but the manager's already made the move. Will he glance and look at Baez? Javier Baez stands in with runners at first and second, only one away here in the sixth. And facing Jose Quas in a tie ball game. First pitch has popped up. Foul ground. Pascantino looking for room. He's got it on a nice grab. Yeah, that's some really good concentration there by the Kansas City Royals first baseman. Pascantino getting over to the wall. And just focusing solely on the ball. It's the only way to make that play. Can't worry about running into the railing there. Now Spencer Torkelson digs in. A couple of walks, a run scored for Torkelson tonight. First pitch is inside. Two walks have put two men aboard here for the Tigers here in the sixth. Two and zero to Torkelson. Yeah, you can take a look at Quas's numbers here. Lots of strikeouts, rarely walks, guys. He's effective because of his arm angle, where he de delivers the baseball from. That's grounded foul. It's a different angle. Guys are so used to looking up around the, the earlobe. These guys do, you know, throw three quarters so you can see that ball better. But when you see guys throwing it from down under, it's tough to pick up. That's inside three and one to Torkelson. And the Abanias waits on deck, hoping for a chance. From that arm angle, sliders can be a very effective pitch. Walked him. Torkelson draws his third walk of the night, and the bases are loaded for Detroit.
With your abundance here, you're looking for some a fastball in that you can drive to the left center gap. You also have to protect the, against the slider going down and away from you. He's quickly ahead, 1-0. Brown ball to third. They'll win the race. And the Tigers leave them loaded in the sixth. $25 million capital project is underway. And now the museum right now is about 10,000 square feet. And now here we are. The plan is to expand about three times that size, 30,000 feet. Uh, in the next five years, although they'd like to get it done a little bit sooner, you know, so it started as a, a one room office will now grow into America's National Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, really an international hub for the Negro Leagues and for social history. And, and if you haven't been, I, we say this every time we do it, if you haven't been, got to go and you still got time to go see it in its current setup. But uh, man, won't that be magnificent, the new one here in a couple of years. Isn't it amazing, Johnny, that that was a one room office to start? <laughs> it's hard to believe. It is. It's amazing. I got a chance to visit oh. the Negro League Museum in Manchester. It's awesome. It, it really is. I was amazed walking through there. That chill bus. It was just it was just all the history. Yeah, I, I would just say this. If you're yeah. going to do that and you should, as, as Johnny mentioned, when you come here to Kansas City, but take your time in doing it. Yeah. Okay. Give yourself hours because you really want to study. Perez high in the air. Playable for green. One away. I know, Simo, you had gone with uh, Nico Goodrum and uh, Kiel Badu and I went last year. Um, Shep, we never went together, did we? We did not. I, I went with Simo and, and Nico Goodrum gotcha. and it was uh, it was enlightening. Yeah. Yeah, yes, that's the right word. Yeah, they're going to have a whole campus. I mean, the 18th and Vines, that historic jazz district. I mean, yeah. they're going to have a whole campus uh, and then the museum is a part of it. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. Bob Kendrick, the president of the museum, does such a fabulous job. I mean, he is a walking encyclopedia. Yeah. I always enjoy talking with him, but just cool to see that there's a lot going on here. Uh, on the sports landscape in Kansas City. Nice to see that. Yeah, and Bob Kendrick does a really good job on the weekends on MLB radio. Black Diamonds is the podcast and the radio show that he hosts. It's it's really neat. And Johnny, doesn't he tell the greatest stories? Yeah, you you <laughs> can sit. You can sit and listen to Bob Kendrick talk. He can narrate, you know, a children's book and put you to sleep. I mean, he just like he's got a way about telling a story that you just sit there and listen. You know what I mean? Yeah, the great storytellers do that, don't they? Like Ernie Howell used to do that. 100%. Yeah, you sit there with your mouth open like, I want more. <laughs> I want more. Yeah, this yeah. is true. I remember I just got him started on Turkey Stearns. You know, I was like a classic, you know, what What can you tell me about Turkey Stearns? You know, 20 minutes later, I was like, wow. <laughs> wow. You leave and you go, is there anything you don't know about Turkey Stearns? <laughs> Three and two to MJ Melendez. Well, Lorenz has been throwing a very effective changeup today. It's been his go-to pitch. Let's see if he'll go to it on 3-2 count here. Walked him. Second walk allowed by Michael Lorenz in here tonight. And before Michael Massey steps in, how about a word from our friends at the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers? Your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers have vehicles arriving daily. Returning AZ Plan lessees can lease a Bronco Sport Big Ben for $379 a month. Think Ford first. Michael Lorenzen will talk over some things with Chris Fetter before he battles Michael Massey, who had a very interesting weekend this past weekend. On Saturday, he got engaged to his longtime girlfriend Jane in Chicago because Massey's from Palos Park, Illinois. So he bought the ring, dropped to a knee, proposed. She said yes. That's good news. That is great news. Yeah. And then on Sunday, he homered in the hometown of Chicago because he grew up as a White Sox fan. Homered on Sunday in the loss to the White Sox. She's a keeper. 
Oh, quite the weekend. <laughs> quite the weekend. <laughs> I'm sure her friends are saying the same thing about Michael. Yes. So, but a good story there for him that last weekend. It wasn't good for Kansas City. They lost another series. One and one to Massey. Lorenzo will have to mix up his looks to first base, kind of change his timing to home plate. Melendez will run. That's fouled away. We brought up the home run. There had to be a lot of emotion for Massey when he hit that home run in Chicago. And after such a big moment on Saturday, what a feeling that must have been. No word on whether he did it for Jane, but he can play it off like he did. And everybody would believe him. Played his college ball at the University of Illinois in Champaign Urbana as Will Vest warms for Detroit. Massey rips one to second. Short stays with it. He gets the out. And there's two away. No panic from Zach Short. Yeah, but I bet you Short will tell you he was trying to be a little bit too quick to try to because he wanted to really turn this double play. This ball's hit hard. He was definitely going to try to turn the double play, but he does an excellent job of just blocking that ball, knocking it down, not panicking. Picks it up, bare hands it, and gets his man at first base. A.J. Hinch is going to go get his man, Michael Lorenzen. His night is over after five and two-thirds. It'll be Will Vest called upon to get the final Kansas City out in the sixth and keep it tied at five on Valley Sports. Game two between the Tigers and the Royals is tomorrow. Eduardo Rodriguez is back on the hill for Detroit. 7 o'clock with the pregame Tigers live. John Keating, Dan Petrie, Johnny Kane. It's all presented by Wallside Windows. The numbers for Eduardo Rodriguez, despite struggling a little bit in his last start, have been gaudy. And he looks to get back in rhythm tomorrow night. First thing he's hoping to do is cheer on Will Vest in a Wallside Windows pitching change. To the final out here in the sixth. Vest has been darn good in his first 11 appearances. Yeah, Vest relies on three pitches four seam fastball, slider, a changeup. He gets Bobby Witt Jr. here in the sixth with a go ahead run at second base. This has done a really good job coming out of that pin and attacking the strike zone, attacking with that fastball. 96, 97 miles per hour. One and one. Low and away, two and one to Bobby Witt Jr., who has popped up and flied out. Melendez walked with one out, reached second on the ground out. Three and one to Bobby Witt Jr. The vest going to throw that fastball. He wants to throw it inside. He wants to make sure he gets it in off the plate. Bobby Witt Jr. likes that ball out of third where he can get some extension. Break two called, it's full. Oof, That's like a heck of a slider, huh? Yeah, I like the confidence in that secondary. That's good slider there. Behind him the count. That's a hitter's count. And he threw that slider. He'll throw a 3-1. Why not throw a 3-2? Fouled away. And you can see how Will Vest has been able to attack. Bobby Witt Jr., four-seam fastball, 97. That's high octane. Then he's slowing him down with that slider. That's a 10 miles per hour speed differential. That can be effective if it's located well. Witt Jr. granted time.
Another one foul back. Witt finished fourth in Rookie of the Year voting a year ago. Fifth rookie ever with 20 homers and 30 stolen bags. Yeah, he's a special player. He's got speed. Pick it at the shortstop and third base position. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming from Vest. He's got some power. Down the right field line foul. Good looking young player. Well, Bobby Witt Jr. right now is in battle mode. It's a really good located fastball down and away. Junior does a really good job of just flicking that ball and just fouling it off. This one's playable in the air to right. Veerling's under it. He's got it, and the threat is over. It took nine pitches, but Vest got Bobby Witt Jr. to keep it tied at five through six. Miggy's moments are brought to you by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Always special on this day for Miguel Cabrera because in 2013, he was kind of gifted a home run from Michael Bourne. Yep. Could have had it. Look at, look at the disgust of the fan. Gosh darn it. That was a Cleveland fan in Cleveland. Miguel Cabrera will take it. You could hear fans saying this in 2013. How can you accept that? Give that back. Stop it. And he laughs it off. It's too hard to hit home runs at this level. I'm going to keep them all. One pitch, one out, as Badu pops out to second to start the seventh. It's a new pitcher, Taylor Clark, Clark and he's been really good, hasn't he? Yeah, he really has been. He's been their most consistent pitcher out of the pen, holding opponents to a 192 batting average. He does it with four pitches. He's got a good slider. Fastball. He's got some mid-90s fastball. He's got a sweeping curveball. Which means it runs way away, starts inside and runs across the plate away from the right handed hitters. He's the fourth reliever used by Kansas City already. Here's Matt Veerling. Big night for Veerling. Drove in two in the first, hit a two run homer in the third. One and one to him. Cued foul. It's one and two to Matt Veerling. That's up high. AJ Hinch has been really impressed with Veerling's latest at bats. He says he likes it when he's aggressive. But we got to remember, he's still young in his major league career, needs experience, needs the at bats. Fly ball down the right field line. Melendez gives chase near the corner. He leaps. It's off the netting and foul. Five runs on seven hits. No errors for Detroit. Five runs five hits. No errors for Kansas City. Three of the Royals' five hits have been home runs. Up the middle on a base hit for Matt Veerling. Third hit of the night for Veerling, and his fourth three hit night of the season. Well, he's just being very patient in the batter's box. He's getting some really good pitchers' pitches, and he's not pulling off the baseball. He's staying on the ball. Using that big part of the field, there's a hard ground ball, base knock up the middle. He's just getting re rewarded for his approach. He told me that he likes to think fastballs to right center field, and then when they throw him off speed, it speeds him up and it just keeps him through the baseball. 
he is working that approach and getting rewarded. Seems like he shortens his swing quite a bit, oh, too. Oh, he definitely does. With two strikes, he, he spreads out. He chokes up. And really, he's just trying to be short and take a more direct path to the baseball. Early in the count, you can be aggressive. Thrown away. Fairling will hold its second. And the Royals gift the Tigers a man in scoring position. Look here. I'm not sure what Taylor Clark here just uncorks this ball. And it gets past Pascantino. Gives Eric Haas an opportunity to hit with the runner in scoring position. Here we go. This is when you want to shorten up. But just think about staying through the middle. Haas pops it up. Perez won't make a play on it. That's about eight rows deep. And it'll be 0-2 to Eric Haas. Tigers one for seven with runners in scoring position. And you see the numbers that are glaring at the bottom of your screen on the Bally Bar. Yesterday they left 11 on base, nine so far tonight. Yeah, but if you're Eric Haas here, the first three at bats all have been to the pool side. The last one hit a line drive to the third baseman Lopez. So that tells me that he's a little bit more out in front, kind of going out and around the baseball. So it would be important for him to keep that angle, stay through it, and see if he can't get rewarded. That bounces in, and a nice stop by Perez. Over the years, how many runs has Salvador Perez saved behind the dish? Yeah, he's been one of the game's best. No doubt. On both sides of the ball. Five-time Gold Glove winner. It's one and two to Haas. That's up high two and two. For me, that's just a show-me pitch. Wants to straighten Eric Haas up. Don't want him to lean out of the plate. Clark wants to go to that slider down the way. Foul back. Oh, he was on that. Good swing. It's a fastball. And it's out of third with two strikes. Eric Cost a little bit late, but he's protecting. There's a drive. Left field. Prado's got it just before the track. A tag from second and a head first slide brings Veerly in safely. Good base running on the part of Matt Veerling. Yeah, Eric Haas just missed his ball to left field. But Veerling does a good job there of getting back to second base and tagging up and getting himself to third. A lot of things can happen when you're at third base. Foul. Wild pitch. Perez does do an excellent job of keeping the ball in front, but it can scamper away from him. So look for Veerling being aggressive at third base and the ball in the dirt. Zach Short will try and give him the lead back. First pitch swinging. Deep center field. Back goes Bradley Jr. He leaps and he's got it. He stole away another one. Two incredible plays by the former gold glover, Jackie Bradley Jr. Zach Short thought he got enough of it to bring home Verling and give the Tigers the lead back. But Bradley Jr. denies Detroit again. We stretch in KC. Brought to you by Figer Law. Bottom of the seventh, Will Vest against Nicky Lopez, Jackie Bradley Jr., and Michael Garcia. In a good one, in game number one of a three-game series between the Tigers and the Royals. Lopez follows it back. It's 0-2. Lopez tripled and scored in the fifth. He rode home on Jackie Bradley Jr.'s first home run of the season to tie it at five. Fouls another one away. Araldus Chapman popping the glove.
McKinstry way off the line at third for Lopez who tripled to right center field. Outside one and two. Another one away two and two. We mentioned Lopez reinstated today. He was on the 10 day IL with appendicitis. Fouls another one away. Lopez is one of those pesky hitters in the batter's box. He just fouls off pitches just wears the pitcher down. A little like McKinstry for <laughs> he Detroit. Really, isn't he? he really is. Yeah. On the left field line long run for Badu he chased it down before he crashed into the wall and Lopez is retired to start the seventh. Let's take a look at the T-Mobile coverage cam and it's a Akil Badu on that last play. Yeah Akil Badu's playing in on this play on this ball here off the bat of Lopez but he does an excellent job of getting back knowing where he's at and he chases that ball down. This is Jackie Bradley Jr. A check swing grounder foul. Well Akil Badu was talking to us before the game about playing left field and just how spacious it is and he actually likes playing out there allows him to use his speed. But really focusing on the jumps as much in this ballpark as perhaps any other because of how much ground he has to cover. Pretty good example of it there to retire Lopez. 0 oh and 2 to Jackie Bradley Jr. Jason Shreve is warming up for Detroit. That's up high. 1 and 2. Will Vest does have a changeup. He's been mostly fastball slider mix. Ground ball left side McKinstry. Good arm to throw out the fleet footed Bradley Jr. And here's Michael Garcia the number nine hitter. The first pitch is low to Garcia. McKinstry even with the bag at third now just in case. Garcia yeah, with decent speed. This is a big out for Will Vest here facing the number nine hitter. Got the lefty Shreve warming up in the pin. Got Prado on deck left handed hitter. So you think Shreve gets Prado huh. I definitely do. Okay. Well, I think Des gets Garcia first. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right answer. <laughs> Two and one. <laughs> Three and one to Garcia. A two out walk to the number nine hitter. And here comes A.J. Hinch. He wants his lefty Chase and Shreve to come in and get the final out in the seventh. It's a tight one in KC. It's been that way all night long. Tied at five. We're back with more after this. Foley 
We had all kinds of fun. So hope we can see you in Boston as well. Wall side windows pitching change chasing Shreve goes lefty on lefty against Nick Preto with a man at first and two away here in the KC seventh. She can be very effective against a left hand hitter. Split finger. Fastball. First pitch swinging slowly to second. Short will get the out at first and Chase and Shreve very efficient and he gets the job done. It is really nice to to be up here with him and to see him what he's doing. Um, you know, I think everyone in this world wants to see the ball the way Riley's seeing the ball <laughs> right, right now. It looks like a beach ball to yeah, him, right? I'm sure it looks like it. That's too. what it especially seeing like. from the on deck circle. It seems like he's on everything. Um, but yeah, he's just such an incredible player and what a, what a person too. How, how Spencer Torkelson, his good friend Riley Green, do up second in the inning. Jonathan Scope is going to pinch hit for Zach McKinstry to start the eighth for Detroit. Scope swung the bat really well in that national series against the left hand pitcher. Hit some balls hard to left field. He's really putting himself in better hitting positions, given now that he's not an everyday player. Facing a flamethrower in Araldus Chapman, who starts him off at 99. And he's also eliminated a lot of movement in his mechanics, which allows him to be on time. And he'll have to be on time against this 104 mile per hour fastball from Chapman. One and one to scope. Now two and one. Ripped foul. He was waiting for the slider and it left his bat at 106 miles an hour but pulled it foul. Yeah but I like that swing right there. Two one count. You know he's. Chapman's got some velo. I'm not going to be late. That's how you want to be. A, that's how you want to attack. That one's foul back. That was at 99. You were talking about that on Tigers Live earlier today, facing that type of heat. And yeah, you just got to get started early. As soon as that leg lifts up, you want to start your mechanics. Fouls it back. You want to start your load. Meaning that you want to get your hands going back and you want that front foot down early. So you can pick that ball up and be able to get the barrel to it. Another one grounded foul. What a task, huh? Coming off the bench in the eighth inning and facing a guy who throws a hundo. I think it's one of the toughest jobs in baseball being a pinch hitter, a role player. Don't get those consistent at bats. Tough to, tough to get your rhythm and your timing. The good at bat for scope though here, three and two. And scope granted time. See the sequence that Chapman is attacking. Scope with. You see the velo there. That's high octane for sure. Another one pulled foul. This is the tenth pitch of the at bat for Jonathan Scope. Going to need at least 11. Right side, Pascantino will take it himself. What a battle between 
Chapman and Scope. Down to Johnny Kane. Yeah, great battle there. You know, Shep, before the game, we were talking to the guys about the potential of facing Roldis Chapman. Riley Green had not faced him yet in his career. He'll get the opportunity now. And as Simo, you were talking, he said, I'm going to be early, get the head out. I'm sitting on an inside fastball. Hope I get it. Talk it into existence, please. <laughs> Green takes it low, 1 0. And, and you can tell right there by that take, he's selling out to that pitch on the inside part of the plate, that fastball. <laughs> In for a strike, 1 and 1. Chapman also understands that Riley comes in hot, seeing the ball well. So he's just not going to groove one of those fastballs. Sawed him off, but finds a hole. When you explode the bat explosion, it actually fooled Bobby Witt Jr. It did. He started going towards second base. Here's a little slider going down and away. And look at Bobby Witt Jr. He thinks the bat is the ball, and he goes the opposite way. And Green gets himself a knock. He'll take it. And so will the Tigers as Javier Baez digs in. Baez one for six in his career against Aroldis Chapman. Even with Chapman throwing up over 100 mile per hour fastball, Baez turns that fastball around. So don't be surprised if Chapman goes to a lot of those off-speed pitches. Use the octane there, one and one. Now two and one to Baez, who has a couple of base hits, a ground out, and a pop out. Another mouthful of seeds before he gets the two one from Chapman. That's the second disengagement for Chapman with Green at first. Now Green could be a lot more aggressive over there. Might see him get a bigger lead. Swung on and missed. That fastball at 98. Remember, batter gets a timeout, two disengagements, and then you've got to get an out. Otherwise, it's a balk. Foul tipped into the glove of Perez. Baez goes down, swinging two away. Yeah, Chapman just overpowers Baez here. Baez, big swing. With two strikes on that 99 mile power fastball on the outer third. Baez had to stand there a little bit, thinking, wow. Ah, felt like I should have got to that pitch. What a night for Spencer Torkelson. His first three walk night of his career, and he scored a run as well. Turned on that baby. Yanked it foul. Off speed is in there. That's a splitter at 89 to make it one and two to Torkelson. Now, if you're Riley Green with two strikes, Chapman likes to throw that split. He likes to throw the slider. Might be able to go first move. 
and try to get yourself in the scoring position. And if he's thrown out, Torkelson just leads off the top of the ninth inning. Foul back. That was 101. Three gets by Torkelson. Tigers strand another. They've left 11 men on base tonight. From here at Lee Summit West High School, and in talking with them earlier today, Shep, he had of the 15 guys that were on his high school team his sophomore year, of the 15 guys, all of them went on to play at least a semester of college baseball. That is a stacked team. Wow. Although they didn't get out of sectionals. Really? Is that crazy? That is crazy. How do you not, well, immediately you think, how do you not win at all, right? But it's well, hard to win, right? Hey, man, they still thinks about it. Well, but he, really good, really good high school pitcher. For sure. He was a All-American at LSU and the National Freshman of the Year, too, so pretty darn good at LSU. Wall side windows pitching change. He has been lights out in his last 15, and he faces the two, three, and four hitters here in the eighth. Vinny Pascantino, Salvador Perez, and MJ Melendez. Yeah, Lang has got three plus pitches. Down the right field line and into the netting, fortunately, to make it a long strike. 0 and 2 to Pascantino. Fastball 95 to 97. Change up, it's a hard change up at 90 miles per hour, 89 to 90. His go to pitch that security blanket is that <laughs> that knuckle curveball he'll throw it at any count strikes out Pascantino to start the eighth there's that change up 89 90 miles per hour running away from the left Pascantino but look at this 14 and two thirds in and just been stingy. Look at all the K's just using all parts of the strike zone. First pitch swinging Perez grounds it to scope strong arms and across the diamond to get him by a step. Boy, does he have a can. <laughs> Balls hit hard scope knocks it down. There's no panic there picks it up. And pulls out the gun. 105 off the bat from Perez, and it felt like scope through it about as fast across the diamond. By the way, that Lang strikeout was 3D powered by Google Cloud. Statcast 3D powered by Google Cloud. He has been so good. You take it all the way back to September 1st of a year ago, striking out over. A man per inning pitched. Yeah, just love the mentality. Yeah. I mean, he, he lives for these moments, wants to be in those moments. Yeah, that's the thing, right? I mean, it because being at the back end of a bullpen is more than just stuff. You've got to have the right mental yeah. ability. <laughs> He's got it. One and two. And what I love is he doesn't panic. He says that I'm just chilling, making pitches. I'm thinking, okay. Well, that means that he enjoys, you know, being in these high pressure situations. Just thinks that he's better than the guy in the batter's box. Most of the time he is. to center green on the track at the wall he's got it eight pitches and Alex Lang sits down the Royals one two three in downtown Kansas City a beautiful sight really enjoy the city enjoy coming here 
lot of it has to do with my memories as a kid with the Tigers beating the Royals in 1984 in the ALCS two games to none before winning the world championship. Scott Barlow makes his 18th appearance. He will face Andy Abanez to begin the night. Then it'll be Akil Badu and Matt Veerling in a 5-5 ball game. Yeah, and Barlow's got a mid-90s fastball. And to go along with that fastball, he's got an effective curveball. He's holding hitters to 212 batting average. And hitters chase that pitch at a high clip. You know, Simo, we just saw a really good shot of that Union Station. That's where the NFL draft was this year, if you recall. Ibanez turns on a foul. Of course, the NFL draft will be in Detroit next year. Looking forward to it. Well, you'll be working. I will. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to it, too. But I'm with you too. I always enjoy coming to this ballpark. Love playing here at this ballpark. One of my favorites. Beautiful place. Always had some tough battles with these Kansas City Royals, though. Tough out there. Ibanez strikes out on a tough curveball. One away. And this is a legit 12 to 6 breaking ball here. Watch where the ball just bottom falls out when he gets into the hitting zone. It's Barlow's most effective pitch in his arsenal. Very uncomfortable swing there by Bunyas. Brings up a kill by Du. Squares to bunt. Good idea. Couldn't connect. It's one and one. Yeah, definitely like the thinking there, but do given that he can that he has tremendous amount of speed. Gets that bunt down and trying to cause some havoc. Put some pressure on this Kansas City Royals defense. Outside two and one, but do has been on base twice tonight. He's driven in a run with a walk. And he has scored a run. Checks his swing that bounced in there didn't go and it's three and one. Well you're just saying to yourself get on any way you can with this guy. And give Veerling another chance who's already has three hits tonight. Rips it foul. They're ducking in the KC dugout on that swing. A line drive at Pascantino for the second out. Another really good at bat, though, by. Akil Badu. There's a breaking ball there, but you can see Pasatino there pretty much covering the line there. No doubles. Barely had, and barely had to move. Yeah, ball to Badu hits it right at him. Bierling looks at one low and away. What a night for him, huh? A two run single in the first, a two run homer in the third, and a single in the seventh. Four RBIs from Matt Veerling tonight. Well, and Scott Barlow has, and Scott Barlow has to be thinking. I'm not going to allow Matt Veerling to beat me. I'm going to see if I can't get him to chase something. And he'd rather deal with Eric Haas, who's on deck. Veerling looks at a strike. It's two and one. Browns it foul. Our 
Paulo has thrown really a lot of breaking balls, a lot of curved balls. Let's just see if he doesn't want to speed him up with that mid 90s fastball at the top of the strike zone. Good take, it's three and two. Eric Haas is on deck. Barely making sure he hadn't used his timeout yet. And C.B. Buckner told him, obviously, he hadn't, so he grants him the timeout here. Really's going to get him another break, get himself another breaking ball here. He's going to have to stay on it. Inside walked him. What a productive night for Veerling. Opens the door for Eric Haas here in the ninth. We're also going to have to pay attention to Veerling at first base. Talked about his speed. He runs well. Haas with a deep fly ball his last time up in the seventh. That's the slider that missed. 1-0. Swing comes up empty one and one. Well, it just looks like Eric Haas is looking for that pitch right there, that curveball. He's upset with himself. Fastball in for a strike. One and two to Haas. Hadn't seen many fastballs from Barlow. Been a heavy dose of those breaking pitches. And I feel like he just wanted to show Eric Haas that fastball to get right back to that curveball. There goes Veerling. And Haas strikes out to end the ninth. We're tied at five. Who gets the ninth for Detroit? Alex Lang looks like he's going to get a second straight inning on Valley Sports. There's been over 300 pitches made in this game here tonight as we enter the bottom of the ninth. Alex Lang is out there against Michael Massey to start the inning. And then it'll be Bobby Wood Jr. and Nicky Lopez do up. Lang needed eight pitches to retire the, or the Royals in order in the eighth. A check swing that went too far. One and two. And I feel like AJ, no question, trusts Alex Lang in this situation, even against the left hander, because he's got two plus secondary pitches that he can put the left hands away with. He can put them away with a curveball and that effective changeup. Now two and two. Made everybody flinch. Three and two. You can see Bobby Witt Jr. there on deck. You're laying right here, though. You're going to go to that security blanket, that curveball. Walk the leadoff man. Just take a look at Bobby Witt Jr.'s numbers against off the breaking ball. 
You can see MLB average of 269 on the fastball, but the breaking ball. Bobby Wood Jr. is only hitting 197. Look for Lane to throw like, a lot of breaking balls. Now, we don't have to set that breaking ball up. You might see him throw fastballs in just to kind of speed him up. But he's definitely going to try to get him out with the breaking ball. That's why they do it right there. The whiff rate on his curveball, the highest of any pitch in Major League Baseball. Nate Eaton is the pinch runner at first. The hitter is Bobby Wood Jr. Takes it low. Checked his swing, able to hold up two and oh. Well, you know you're going to get a break. With two, you knows he's going to get a breaking ball from Alex Lane. He was able to hold up, saw that pitch, but he's going to get another one right here. Missed inside, 3 0 to Witt Jr. And now the question is is Witt Jr. disciplined enough to get a fastball, get something over the plate, and not try to get big and pop this ball up? In there for a strike. Nicky Lopez, a good bunter, is on deck. Good contact hitter, too. Where that curveball one more time? There goes the runner. Ground ball to third. Scopes only play is to first. He's got to get Lopez here. Yep, and you're going to see Badu over here in left field. He's going to be playing in a little bit on left field. He's got to give himself a chance to, on a base hit, to throw out the base runner, Eaton at the second base. Riley Green's also moved in at center field, and he continues to move in. Remember, Lopez found the right center field alley in the fifth, tripling and then riding home on Bradley Jr.'s home run. Yeah, but Lopez is one of those guys that, again, just tries to flick that ball out in the short left field. With Badu playing in, he gives himself a chance to come in and make a grab. Or on a base hit, he gives himself a chance to throw out the base runner. One on one. Right field, Virland is staying back. He has to respect the pull power. Tigers are thinking if they're going to get beat, they're going to get beat the opposite way, and they're going to make Lopez hit it over their head. Swung on and missed. That's the changeup, one and two. Just really like the action. Good arm speed. On that changeup and good location. Always ran that changeup away. Surprised you see the fastball out of this zone up. That's low, it's two and two. Lopez goes down, swinging two away. There's that change up again. It's a hard change up, but look how Blank turns that ball over. You see that ball take 
with a pretty much run, good arm side run on it. Just never got to the plate. Faces Jackie Bradley Jr. with a winning run on second. First pitch, miss outside. Base runner at second base. Eaton's being really aggressive in his secondary. He's anticipating contact, trying to get a really good jump. Swung on and missed. The curveball makes it one and one. Against the left handers, that changeup has been his most effective pitch. Two and one. Still think it's important for Lane to, to throw that fastball because you got to get the guys off that off speed pitch. So fastball inside. 2 1 grounded up the middle. Baez is there. Gobbles it up. Inning over. We're headed to extras. Alex Lang's a bad man, folks. He really is. Nice job to get out of it in the ninth. We head to the 10th. Deadlocked it. Headed to the 10th, tied at five. This has been exhausting. It, it, hasn't it, it? it really, it really has. has been. Yeah. It, it's been a real, really good game, though. Both teams, there's no quit in them to keep fighting. Um, and we find ourselves right here at a 5 5 tie. Just feel like now's the opportunity for. Zach Short to move the runner to third base, got to lay down this butt. Come on, get it done. Tigers have left 12 on base. He's swinging away. He's hacking. Eric Haas is starting at second base because he made the final out in the ninth. But I think with the new rules and the putting the runner at second base, I just don't think managers feel comfortable just trying to score one run. Right. Especially on the road. I feel like you have to score multiple runs, given that the home team will get this opportunity as well. Ground ball foul. It is interesting that both managers have chosen to use the guy at the back end of their bullpen for two innings. Alex Lang went the eighth and ninth. And Scott Barlow went the ninth and now has the tenth. Yeah, and I think both managers want swing and miss stuff. And Barlow's got swing and miss stuff, and there's no question Alex Lang fits the bill as well. Two and two to Zach Short. Would like to see Short, though, use that right side of the diamond. Good take and a tough one on that curveball to make it three and two. And Shub, just by thinking that if you're Zach Short, you put your body in the best position to be able to handle that breaking ball that Barlow's been throwing. I mean, seems like every pitch. He walked him. Does your philosophy change now? Not with Jonathan Scope in the batter's box. Feels like he's a guy that rarely bunts, probably has never bunted in his career. So he's going to be a guy that's looking to drive the ball to the big part of the field. Low and away, 1 0. Scope came in as a pinch hitter in the eighth and grounded to first. There is a strike to even it up. And you're probably wondering at home, why did he take that fastball? But when you're getting a heavy dose of those breaking balls, as a hitter, you start to look for that pitch. And you'll see hitters take that fastball. Grounds it foul. We mentioned he came in in the eighth as a pinch hitter, but he battled Araldus Chapman for 11 pitches before grounding out. Yeah, that was a really good at bat there. It just didn't give in. Strikes out this time. 
one away. Well, that breaking ball was set up off that third, that last pitch, that fastball, that fastball inside. Got Scope looking inside, and then he was able to go away with that breaking ball, with that slider. Let's see what Riley Green can do. 1 0. Green has walked, singled, struck out a couple of times. Brown ball foul. Fly ball down the right field line. But foul. Gave it a ride, but a long strike. It's one and two to Riley Green. Yeah, Riley, Riley swung at that pitch like he was looking for it. Ugly numbers with runners in scoring position the last two games. Outside, two and two. to right on a line and it'll drop in front of MJ Melendez he bobbled it Haas will stop at third the bases are loaded for the Tigers for the third time tonight with only one away here on the 10th you get it you can see right here Melendez not sure if he's gonna be able to come in and make a play on that ball maybe got a little bit too close to it knocks it down and there's that breaking ball. Green hits it like he knows it's coming. Eric Haas has to freeze because he wasn't sure if Melendez was going to come in and be able to make a play. Long discussion with Salvador Perez in his infield. Given the struggles of Baez on off-speed pitches, given the slider down and away, curve balls down and away, he's had a difficult time laying off those pitches. Baez against Barlow, no success yet. Baez has been over there in the dugout watching how Barlow has attacked the Tiger hitters. Rips it to left. And off the wall. Pass scores. Short will score. Green is on his way. Baez delivers. A base is clearing double. Because he's nailed at third base. But what a moment for Javier Baez here in the tenth to give the Tigers the lead. Well, we've been talking about in the outfall at third base. We've been talking about the big moments and coming up in big situations. Tigers have scuffled in that department. But Javier Baez has something to say about it tonight. Gets a fastball right over the middle. He smokes this ball over the head of Pareto. And Riley Green gets a, everybody on the run, scoring. And Javier Baez being greedy. Trying to get to third base here. But look at this head first slide to the back of the bat. Swim move there. Comes off the back, but it looks like he might have got his hand or his fingers back on the back. Did Lopez tag him originally? Then did he keep the tag on? Baez able to reach back with his left hand. 
by a couple of fingernails. Grab the bag. But you can see the head first slide. You can see the swim move there. Move the left hand out of the way. Touching the back of the bag with your right hand. Right hand comes off. Tries to reach back with the left. Lopez keeps the tag on him. Jeff Nelson, the third base umpire and the crew chief was right there. But what a time for Baez to collect his first hit off Barlow in his career and clear the bases to give the Tigers a three run lead. After review, the call is confirmed. The runner is out. Detroit will lose its challenge. Well, this ball jumps off Baez's bat. That ball is hammered to left field. But look at Riley Green there, just going into Heredit. He knows that the left fielder is not going to be able to make the play. And that's just solid base running there. Barlow's night is over. It ends on Baez's base. Javier Baez, an offensive hero here for the Tigers tonight, one of a few. He cleared the bases, gives Detroit a three-run lead, forced Kansas City back to their bullpen. Josh Stamont is in to face Spencer Torkelson with three runs home, nobody aboard, and a couple away. Yeah, just two different pitches that the Tigers will have to deal with. Fastball gets up to 99. He's got a sharp breaking ball. Torkelson pops it foul. It's hitters to chase that pitch quite often, that curveball. Now one and one to Spencer, two and one to Spencer Torkelson. For Kansas City, in the 10th, Jackie Bradley Jr. will start at second, and then it's the nine, one, and two hitters. Say Cisnero has been warming for the 10th inning. <laughs> Grounded foul. Kansas City pitchers tonight, Simo, have thrown well over 200 pitches. And the Tigers have really made this role staff work. That's a big deal for the rest of this series. It is. It sets them up to go into tomorrow's ball game and the next game with a lot of confidence against these guys because you're going to see these guys again. And it really might limit the Kansas City options moving forward. It's always nice to get into the bullpen that first day you get, yeah. you get to the town, you get to the city, because the more pitches you see from the bullpen arms, the better your approach becomes. Torkelson draws another walk. That is four walks on the night for Spencer Torkelson. What a job, huh? Yeah, just really not wavering. Getting, he's going to make sure that he gets himself a good pitch to hit. And even when he was getting good pitchers' pitches, following those pitches off, 
together some really good at bats. And now it's Andy Abanez. Tigers have 10 walks tonight. Ibanez follows it back. Eighteen walks in the last two games combined. Really be patient. That's, you talk about control in the zone. That's a little high for Ibanez. He was strong enough to hold up. Two and one to Andy Ibanez. Short gains. Trust in the process. And seeing it come to fruition. Yes, indeed. Now three and one. What Torkelson has done tonight is pretty impressive. No one since J.D. Martinez in 2017 has walked four times in a game in a Tigers uniform. Well, the way the ball's been jumping off his bat, he's kind of hit the pitchers out of the strike zone. Ibanez pops it up. That's playable behind first for Pascantino. Inning is over, but Javier Baez picked a good time to have his hardest hit of the season. Javier Baez feeling good and Tigers feeling pretty good right now as they head to the bottom of the 10th. Up three and a wall side windows pitching change. Say hello to Jose Cisnero to try and close it up and win it for Detroit. Well Jose Cisnero commanding the strike zone a lot better here of late pitching very effective in the strike zone. Two seam fastball, 96 to 98. We'll throw a slider. But when he gets himself into trouble, he'll definitely go to that fastball. He'll get the nine, one, and two hitters. Jackie Bradley Jr. starts the inning at second base. Well, right now, if you're Cisnero with a three-run lead, you just want to attack the hitters. You don't want to give any free passes. You want to make this Royals offense swing the bat, put the ball in play. Kansas City in the past has been a team that is willing to play a little quote-unquote small ball. They really can't here because they're down three because of Baez's clutch hit in the 10th. Tigers have been waiting for those yeah. big knocks in those big situations. Nice to see Baez come through. Tigers were one for ten with runners in scoring position before Green and Baez got the hits in the tenth. Two and zero oh to Garcia. Nero's got a better feel for his slider. 2 1 count. You might see it right here. Inside, 3 and 1. This one you want to challenge the number nine hole, the nine hitter. Walked him. Remember, that's what happened in the top of the tenth when Zach Short drew a good walk. 
to the top of the order, Nick Prado. And Prado can't change the game with one swing of the bat, even though he's a leadoff hitter. He's got some power to the pull side. Cisneros should crowd it with some fastballs. Good mound visit from Eric Haas to try and settle down Jose Cisnero. Looks like Fed's coming out of the dugout as well. Jason Foley starts to move. One of the things that eats at manager A.J. Hinch is walks. They've been talking at length about just commanding the strike zone, pitching effectively in the zone. And Cisneros done that for the most part here of late. Yeah, he hadn't walked a man in his last five appearances. But he walked Michael Garcia and is behind 1-0 to Nick Prado. It's a little reminder, attacking with the fastball, effective pitches in the zone. That's fouled back to make it one and one. See right there, Baez playing right up the middle. Carter likes that ball out on the plate. Big strike there, make it one and two. David McCall there by C.B. Puckner. The Tigers will take it. What a fastball at the top of the strike zone right here. Just missed outside, oh. two and two. You can just see that this ball here he catches the paint. It's painted on the outside part of the plate. Eric Haas didn't like it. You see him shaking his head there, having a little conversation with C.B. Buckner. Got him. Take a look at this location here. That's 96 painted on the black. That's just wicked at 96 mile per hour. Huge exhale from Jose Cisnero. Here's Vinny Pascantino who has struck out twice but also homered. On the outside rail to make it 0-1. Well, we know there's power in this bat. So if you're Cisnero, you have to keep him off balance. If you're going to go inside, you have to make sure you go way inside. Really want to make this guy uncomfortable. That's up high, one and one. Time is called. Cisnero's got a really good feel for that slider. Staying away from Pasquino. Low and away, two and one. <laughs> Where Baez is, right back up the box for Pasquino, who follows it away. So a hole on the left side, but Pascantino is primarily a pull hitter anyway. And that's why you start, that's why you're seeing Cisnero stay away from him. Won't be surprised if he tries to elevate a fastball just to kind of change his high level. He's been working the bottom of the strike zone with that slider. Second straight strikeout for Jose Cisnero, two away.
look at the location here. Effective slider down in the zone. Pascantino not able to hold up. It's a big out there by Cisnero. Now he faces Salvador Perez, who's 0 for 4 against him in his career. Misses wide. 1 0. Perez leaves this team with 11 home runs. Leads him in homers and RBIs. And had much success against Cisnero. Two to as a hitter. I'm looking for a fastball middle in. Given that one swing of the bat, I can change the game. So if you're Cisnero, if you're going to go inside again, run that two seamer in on his hands and take advantage of his aggressiveness. All the way to the backstop. Haas will eat it. Both runners advance. You can just see here, this is just a wild pitch. Didn't give Eric Haas a chance to make a play on this ball. This might be a situation where this is narrow. Might just want to walk Perez because you don't want your best hitter on the team to beat you. And you might want to deal with Melendez, who's on deck. 19th pitch of the inning for Jose Cisnero. It's 3 and 1. Field. Veerling's under it. Tigers win it in 10. 8 5 thanks to some heroics from Veerling and Baez at the plate. They improved to 5 and 2 in extra inning games. This was a doozy. Let's send it to John Keating standing by at the Figer Law Desk for Tigers Live Post Game. Fellas. Thank you for joining us tonight in Kaufman Stadium. Long stand.